stick foliage at all. So I did a little bit of research just going through scraps of artwork and pages and I saw this what looked like package wrapping. Package wrapping? Package wrapping, like colorful package wrapping. So I just went at it. I took my acrylics on top and I just smashed them on that top and when it looks like it had ribbons on top. And I was just, I just put it there and it stayed. And I did a one application on each one of them wow. without even going back into it at all. And uh, I thought I topped it off. You know, it kind of spoke to me that, um, you know, it's not realistic, but it stands for our gorgeous, sturdy trees. It's a gift to us. So the wrapping is still embedded in, in the... Uh, Actually, it's not really gift wrapping, but okay. it, to me, when I looked at this piece of artwork on a oh, page... Oh, okay, you just said it resembled It, lo it looked like gift ah, wrap. I misunderstood you, yeah. Okay. So I wanted to use a gift wrap type of style. So I mm -hmm. took these super bright colors right. and some sponges and some tape and taped up some of the edges and just kind of smashed it right there where I had left some dark blue as just a silhouette of the, um, right. the oak. Once again, we have our stylized couple uh, done in these great shades of blue overlooking uh, and joined together here, I guess, in, in unity supporting uh, this beautiful, beautiful scene. So once again, whether you uh, are certainly a fan of our city, this would be a great to add to your collection. Either one, if not both, of these city park renditions because uh, I just think um, the colors are so vital and it's, uh, again, two different looks at city park from two different angles, but certainly representing the magnificent architecture we have there along intertwined with the natural beauty. Okay, we did, I'm sorry, you probably said the size and I missed it. No, I didn't. Something. This is one of my largest paintings. It's about three and a half, four feet tall and about three feet across. Wow, nice. And Very it's, nice. It's gallery wrapped as well. I'm, I'm a big fan of, of oversized pieces. I tell everybody that's like wallpaper of today, you know, using paintings as, as the wallpaper instead of uh, filling the whole wall. So if you have a nice big piece, it, it really uh, fills up the wall tremendously. So th this would be certainly one of my tops with regard to not only uh, topic but also size. Okay, and this is, um, again, this is, uh, what do we have media I here? used oil and acrylic on oil this. Oil and acrylic, okay. I put the, okay. put the casino away for a while. I understand it. I understand it. Well, this is great. I'll, uh, nothing wrong with the casino, but I think I'm, I'm, I'm preferring your work so far, I think, in the acrylics and the oil, what I've really seen, other than some special effects on, on some of the casinos. All right, let's see if we can move on to another one, because we've got a few more left. I think, folks, we're meeting with John Umbenstock and... Uh, She's a local painter. She's been doing it since she's uh, sixth grade. Started off in Texas, even though she was a native. Uh, but fortunately, she came back to us, and she displays at the Arts Market on the last, on the third, is it the third Saturday or the last the Saturday? The last Saturday of every month. Last Saturday of the month. Like she said, she's taking a summer breather, but she'll be back there uh, next September. And if you've never been, that's a great place for the family because... It's one big, big block with beautiful trees. It's parked that prior to Casino, uh, Katrina was really not used. And uh, so now it's, it's used so effectively. And, of course, they have food and beverage and other things besides to entertain you and keep you there while, you, while you're there. Music, there's always a live nice. band. So uh, don't hesitate if you've never gone to it. You don't have to spend a dime if you don't want, but still, if you get hungry or want something to drink or just want to hear the music and see the work, uh, plus, of course, the artists will be certainly there, always in attendance to explain their pieces and hopefully uh, uh, make you happy by sending something home with you. All right. We have a few more pieces. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we're ready to set up. Uh, take a look. Uh, here we go. Now, now we're really bringing that couple into full definition, almost natural colors and seeing their, a lot more details on their facial structure. Tell us what's happening here, please, John. This is called Falling in Love in City Park. And like I said, I spent much time in City Park, especially with dating years. And it was great just to be able to have put a blanket out underneath the oak tree next to the lagoon, have the radio on, and just enjoy each other's company. So I want to do a version of, of a couple, not in a really intimate setting, but you could tell it would be a, a love type scene. Sure, very romantic. I noticed any, any any symbolism in the elongature of the couple. 
because they seem to be much more, right. I don't use the word stretch, but almost stretch. Right. I, didn't, I didn't really want to make it to be a, a real scene. Right, More right. imaginative Again, keeping that surrealism in play. And almost it, like they're levitating as well, you know, okay. in, their, in their joy oh, okay. and their love, kind of light. Oh, okay, good light, idea. Like, light, otherwise, like balloons. Uh, and all the birds uh, in attendance, huh? Right, rejoicing. Okay, <laughs> and again, what, mate, what media and what size? This is all oil. All oil? And this is about a foot, maybe 18, 20 inches tall by perhaps two and a half feet long. Gallery wrapped as well. And what was the structure in the left? Whereabouts is this? That's in? the peristyle. Peristyle again? again? Okay. The peristyle. Okay. Very, very With nice. With the lagoon in the background. Yeah. Oh, beautiful greens. Colors are really nice here. And again, continuing that same kind of theme in City Park. Let's move on. Cause we've got it's a, also done in palette knife, too. Oh, palette knife. Wow. Palette knife. That's, that, to me, it seems a lot more difficult than, than a paintbrush, but I, I might be totally wrong. But I like that. And that maybe kind of explains the elongation, even though I'm sure you could do that with a brush as well. But it kind of feels like it goes continuously with that. All right. Let's see if we can move on to the next. Because I think we've only got, like I say, two, two or three left, and we're getting near the end of the time. So we want to be able to catch them all for you before we wrap up. Okay, so let's see what we have going on next. Um, we're ready for the painting? I know we are. There we go. Okay, now this is, uh, this was really to me out in left field. And this is way, I mean, again, returning back, a different, different look than when we started and uh, moving away from what we've seen, but still extremely attractive. Let's talk about this one because this one seems very, very unique. This one's called Dawning 2. I had done a little pencil sketch and then did a smaller painting, and then I really wanted to explore texture. So I took, it's all oil, uh, did it with palette knife, and I wanted to use some uh, collected items. Uh, I've been a seamstress a lot of my life. So I've collected lots of different fabrics and threads and strings and such. So in the, on top of the clouds, I used some, I dipped the string into the white oil paint and then squiggled it on top of the cloud. Okay. Also the trees are in the pinkish tones because it's at dawn, it's in the morning, so it's showing that glowing warm light through, this is through very, the trees. Very, yeah. very pretty. To me very reminiscent of an impressionist painting, so I, I'm all with this, but I can say this this seems to be the unique entity of the ones that you brought today. Now that it makes any less or better. I just think that uh, it really uh, is different, let's put it this way, than some of the other ones you've shown. So I like it a lot. I think, uh, you know, hopefully others might also. So I put a lot uh, of texture underneath before I even laid the paints on. And then in the boat in the, in the foreground, I used some swatches of sculptured upholstery fabric, dark wow. brown. Wow. To give it kind of a rugged look. Yeah, you really with have add, add. well used your, like you say, your collected um, materials, huh? Okay, so there we go. There's there's a really nice one. I mean, not that the others weren't, but this is really, I'd like to say, closest I've seen today to an impressionistic painting of John's, and so this could certainly meet all requirements. Some of the other folks might not want surrealism, or might not want some of the uh, abstracts that I like so much. So this uh, might uh, meet, certainly meet some of their requirements who are lo looking more toward the typical reality uh, photography-based uh, or impression-based uh, paintings. All right, let's see. We've got a couple more, so let's move on and see if we're ready for our next painting. Ah, now this is, again, a duet that is really one painting and a large one as well, but really beautifully done from the colors. So let's talk about this one. What do you have a title on it? It's called Cypress Bayou. A it's, perfect name. Uh, one of my largest paintings. It's side by side, elongated tall. Each panel is about 18 inches wide and about maybe almost four feet tall. Okay. And my vision was to uh, show the, the when you're out on the marsh, you, mm -hmm. you always seem to see a distant cloud coming. That that rain is on its way. And also to put the uh, cypress trees in to the full color of their autumn uh, orange and autumn you know, brown tones and then I wanted to contrast it with some silvery marsh glass grass that was blowing in the mm -hmm. breeze and below is the deep purple waters of the bayou with a couple of um, lurking alligator shapes wow. hiding among the grass below. Now uh, 
I believe we. I mean, is this? I think there is actually a Cypress Bayou in Louisiana. I'm not that geographically <laughs> geared, and I was just wondering: is it named because of the number of Cypress trees that are actually uh, part of the um, the Bayou, a part of the look? It's uh, not that I went to Cypress Bayou. Oh, I thought maybe you had taken a tour. It's not that I went there and did a painting on it. It's just that I wanted to do a painting of a of Cypress the bi Bayou. of the Bayou with yeah. lots of Cypress. Uh, I do go to to the marshes and go and you know, flat boating and oh, so you've done all that and fish. Oh, okay. So it's it's more of an image of my uh, I guess recollection. Collective past, but at least right. you've actually visualized this not not just mentally but also uh, from a firsthand experience. Been there. Yeah. Well, I love the idea of the colors because of course not using in the purples with the oranges and I, I just think really are great. Okay, let's go ahead. We're really running out of time, and I think we've got two more paintings, so we can get those up real quick. Uh, Mr. Floorman, I mean, Mr. Photographer, then we can, a cameraman, I guess. Uh, we have so many titles here, folks. It's hard to keep up for an old person like myself. But I think uh, we're ready. Are we ready for the, uh, well, we don't have that much time to stretch, so is there a problem? Let's see. We're talking to John Umdenstock. Right, a little uh, dog one, huh? And uh, she is a local painter, uh, well, of German heritage, like myself. Don't hold that against us. Uh, and now we think we're ready to go ahead and take a look at the next painting. Because I think this is our last one, or do we have one more, folks? One more. One more after this. So let's go ahead. This was the little dog. This was the other one that I thought was unique to the, uh, to the whole series we've been looking at. Let's see if we can... Get it. Tell us about this pup. Is it a relative? This is, or? This is called Brownie the Bayou Dog. Brownie the Bayou this, Pup. This stems from like directly after Katrina, we had put a FEMA trailer behind a house in the bayou in Des Almonds. Uh, people we never knew allowed us to do that, and this was their pet dog. And I, I never could not laugh at this dog because when he come greet you, his whole body wiggled and his tail wiggled as hard as his body wagged. Okay. So and what, from what, memory, I did a little painting of him along the bayou's edge with their house in the background. And the, okay. the cross in the background is actually the cemetery right next to the house. Okay, well, we're going to have to cut short on that. Can you tell us real quickly, what was the median, the size? And we'll try and look at our last one because we're really over time. acrylic on watercolor paper. Okay, let's, do we have one more? We can just flash by and we'll talk over the credits. Can we do that so that people will see our last painting? Is that right? Go, can you do you know by memory till you see this that? This is oak life. Oak life, and it's the most again, recent. It's, cent it's centered on a right. tree, but just a vision of an oak tree, just a ah. haze. But it Beauty. shows that with our sturdy oak trees, it gives such shelter and life for our birds and our our insects. Sort of like a phantom, but really beautifully. Right. Okay, folks, see you at the galleries. Sorry, we. Uh,